Hello and welcome back. Oh, it's been a weird few weeks, hasn't it? And content's going to be a bit sporadic for a little while, so hi. I want to talk about Friends, and we recently lost Matthew Perry, the brilliant, funny, and oddly... I don't have a word for him, I read his book, and his sort of life and his story is fascinating, and genuinely one of the great comedians of his generation, as well as phenomenal actor. And it's just sad witnessing everything that's happened recently. It's been strange. Friends is my comfort TV show. It is the TV show I watch when I'm feeling blue. It's that and Will and Grace, the DVDs come out. Now, I'm going to say this. Friends on physical media. If you want the extended, unsyndicated versions of the episode, you want a white box set that was the 15th anniversary one. And it's a great box set. It's got all the episodes, but in there it's slightly extended versions. There's a lot of stuff in there that's just funny, because I grew up with it syndicated rather than these versions, so it's nice to see and nice to explore those versions of the show. The funny writing, the great characters, and I think it's sort of finding a new audience thanks to streaming. I wish it wasn't the syndicated versions on streaming platforms, but there you go. It's one of those shows that takes me back to a very specific point in my life. I was in through my sort of late teens into my 20s, where life, mid to late 20s, that sort of bubble, where you are doing all this stuff for the first time, your friends really become your family. Adulting in the dimensional sense doesn't really happen anymore then, and you're kind of just feeling your way through life, and that's what it reminds me of. That random text message at 2 o'clock in the morning, do you want to come to my house and we'll watch a movie? Friends is this little snapshot of that life. It is that little moment of when we are looking for ourselves, when we're trying to find ourselves, when we're trying to be someone else. My 20s were very dominated by two relationships, one they don't talk about those. Not great, especially the first one. But the actual bubble that we create at that point. And I think people look at it as well because it's 30 years ago, the first season really. It's around 30 mark. It was that bubble. It was that little snapshot of the 90s of that life, of that pre-social media, pre-texting everyone, pre-everyone having a phone. It was that snapshot. And when you did have a phone, it was ridiculously expensive, so you didn't use it that much. And that was true well into the 2000s. <laughs> there is no way around that. But you have that bubble of your life, and I think that's why it resonates. I think people find this show, and those friendships we make in that bubble are quite unique because they knew us after we were children, after we were teenagers, they knew us in our 20s when we were as lost as each other and I did some crazy stupid stuff in my 20s. You have moment and losing, I think losing the people, like everyone's getting older, that's, that's an honesty, but the fact that we lost him so prematurely made me realise we can never have that back. My 30s are fundamentally different to my 20s. My 30s were... are oh, a mess. <laughs> there is no way around it. But they're fundamentally different. Things are more stable. Life is more stable. Life is completely different. And I think the great writing of Friends, the great characterization, the great moments, and these very real archetypal characters, because it broke a lot of the sitcom norms. And I love the way it did that. It even made jokes out of them. It referenced a bit of pop culture. It, it changed that landscape. And every show, 
not every show, but most shows that came after it were trying to emulate Friends, and the precursor to Friends was Seinfeld. But, and I don't like Seinfeld, I know that's a, com a controversial statement, but it changed the sitcom landscape, and the next evolution of Friends was Will and Grace, which is fundamentally brilliant. But Friends set the bar in the 90s, and everything afterwards did try and emulate it, and tried to create the same vibe, the same everything, but it never quite touched it. Friends was much more organic, and you could tell the cast genuinely adore each other, and you could see this connection between those people, and this, this connection is still there. The connection was on and off screen. I think re-watching the series, because I do dip in out, I've re-watched it so many times, though it did hit a point in the UK where it was on uh, E4 and Channel 4 on a loop. Pretty much every day there was multiple episodes of Friends, but it maintained those viewing numbers from start to... Big Bang became that as well. Um, it became... Those viewing numbers always stayed high, but those tapes were getting so old. So a lot of us, of my generation, really found friends through ancient tapes that were <laughs> grainy and smudgy, and it looked weird. But it's a show that stood the test of time. It's that snapshot of life that we all have, be it stupid dating stuff, making fools of ourselves for people. All of this stuff rolls through and to lose Matthew Perry is just ridiculous. I, I'm in shock over Matthew Perry because Matthew Perry, he was in his 50s. That's no age. You know, it's 18 years older than me. You know, you have those moments and I think life and how we treat it in that bubble of that 20-something what the hell am I doing? Why am I doing this? <laughs> How do I do this? I didn't learn to write a check until I was 26. Um, <laughs> I'm going to tell... I shouldn't admit that, should I? I didn't learn to write a check until I was 26 years old. But you have these characters. You have... We know versions of these people. Multiple versions <laughs> of these people. And just sort of the comfort TV, knowing that that show is an escapist bubble that's helped me through some very oddly dark times in my life. And I remember the Christmas my mother got me the anniversary box set with the long extended versions of each season in it. And it's a phenomenal box set. That's why I haven't bought it on Blu-ray, because there's no point, because it's the syndicated and I think seeing those extra moments, that little bit more risque comedy that was cut out uh, here and there as well adds new light to it because it's just, it is that snapshot. It's those people that we knew and how we knew them and, and all of that stuff. And I know this video is really off the cuff, but I couldn't script anything for it. You know, you have great character moments and Phoebe will forever be my favorite character on television I know at least two versions of her in reality and they will both deny it <laughs> but it's you know it's those characters and those moments and those things and those people I think that's why friends has stood the test of time because you have those archetypal characters that we all know and situations that we've all been in and done stupid stuff and said stupid things and made fools out of ourselves for people and embarrassingly just shook it off and smiled. I'm fine. I think any... That's why it resonates. That's why it still resonates with people. And that's why people are still watching this show. It's not just nostalgia. It's... I think a lot of teenagers are discovering it for the first time because it's a simpler time, you know. I remember thinking, this is 2000, this is a little after, but I was out with my friends and thinking, I've got no credit on my phone, I need to find a payphone. What are their numbers? <laughs> you know. 
that snapshot of life and people, and I miss it. But watch Friends, enjoy Friends. It's purely what it is. It is fun. It's escapism. It's just that weird, odd look at that time in our lives when we were a bit lost and a bit not quite sure where we were going, but it's just a very funny, funny look. And now we don't have Chandler, which sucks. But I think the things that have stood the test of time with friends are its writing characters. I think they have stood that test of time because they're so familiar. They are an element of us. They are part of that circle of us. And friends change the way we speak in a way that I never realised until a few years ago. <laughs> um escapism fun tv and that's what we're lacking i don't think many modern sitcoms even come close i think there are a handful that came after um i think frasier is iconic better than cheers I'm, i i find cheers depressing will and grace and uh i think big bang even but that has that did that's responsible for so much fandom drama it's ridiculous but you know I think Friends set a bar that's very, very hard to beat. And in terms of looking at life through that lens, and I remember life at that point, I remember watching the final episode when it first aired. And that was a moment, that was a really sad moment, but it was such a nice episode. There is a spin-off of Friends called Joey, which I don't particularly like, partly because they changed Joey's character. They They took him from this overly confident guy, could do whatever he wanted, to someone who was anxious and didn't really have any luck with the ladies. Um, but yeah, I think Friends, that series, that bubble of life, that moment, and we all have that moment where we start moving on. It's not as extreme all in one go, like the last episode of the sitcom. But we move house, we get married, we have kids, we... Life changes fundamentally, and we do move on, and then we'll run into these people, and as if no time has passed. And I think that's really what it represents. It, it's that snapshot and bubble. Great TV show. Comfort TV at its best. Watch Friends now, whichever way you want to watch it. Try and get that anniversary box set, because it's fantastic. And, uh, oddly, a very good soundtrack, too. There is a lot of good music in that show. I even own a cookbook that was inspired by friends. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a great book. The only downside to it, it does everything in American measurements, so Google is king for deciphering those, but it's a phenomenal show. And uh, Matthew Perry, I think, will be missed. So as always, tell me what you think in the comments below, like, subscribe for more, and uh, talk to you guys later.